Uh, one more important thing, right? Do you remember we said uh, here, right? If you're switching inputs and outputs, it's a little bit like, you know, one guy who adds these things. About, think about these two as um, two different people doing different things, okay? So this guy adds something on, this guy takes him away, yeah? This guy doubles, this guy halves. Now, if you put these two people together, you combine them, what will the net result be? There will be no change, right? Like whatever number you started with, let's, let's take a number. Let's go like say x equals 1, okay? You add 2, which gives you 3, and then you take away 2, which brings you back to 1, okay? And you can do this with any of the examples, okay? So how would we think carefully? That sort of cancelling out, that net result zero. How would you state that with all of what we've got on the board right now? We've got the notation and the understanding to be able to articulate this in a much more succinct way than just you've got two guys arguing and then blah, blah, blah. How would we say it? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Averages and values mm -hmm. and uh, like hmm. So the idea of an average is tricky. I think that's actually correct. That's fine. Like you put these two together, which is one meaning of the word average. Okay. The problem with average is that, well, average, despite the name, actually can mean a whole variety of different things. There's an arithmetic average, there's a geometric average, there's a logarithmic average, there's a whole bunch of different averages. So even though that works, I want something a little more precise. I'm going to go to get this guy here. This is the reason why we introduce notation. So we can use it to articulate what is going on. Okay? If I'm to take a function, and then I'm going to apply its inverse as well, right? It's a little bit like saying, here's a function. You can put in, we said one before, right? We said one, okay? And then that's a number. Do you agree with that? Like it might be three, or it might be uh, e, or two, or I don't know. Okay, you get the idea, right? That's a number, and now I'm going to apply the inverse to that. So what would that look like in this notation? Now, in order to apply a function to something, I say f of that, like f of oh. 1, right? Well, I want to do an inverse function to that. That's my new number, So f right? inverse of fx. Yeah, there we go. And that always equals x. Now, this means you take the number, you put it through the first function, like this. And then you take that number, and you put it into the inverse function, right? How would I do it backwards? How would I do this one first? How would I write it? Aha, uh -huh, yeah, I'm going to go f of f inverse of whatever number. In fact, I don't have to say one, I just picked that one because I could compute it. I could say it for any number, right? Now, what we're suggesting, what we said with the example of one, is that you should land back on where you started, right? If you've gotten the inverse right, that should be what happens. Can you test that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's test it. I'm going to mute this for a second because you actually have this in your books. Let's have a look at this. <clears throat> Example. By the way, that you should totally have written down. Okay. As an example, let's go example one. Okay. If I said I'm going to go with f of x being x plus 2 and its inverse being x minus 2. Okay, what would f of f inverse be? Let's do it in this order first. Hmm. I'm just going to do a straight substitution first, if that's okay. f inverse, I know exactly what that is. I def defined it one line ago. Okay. So this is actually f of x minus 2. Do you agree with that? Like that's what f inverse is. Just the definition. So now I apply the original function to it, right? Which means everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with an x minus 2. Does that make sense? That's what I'm inputting, okay? So it's x minus 2 plus 2. There's the first function, right? Which of course is just x, right? Simple. Another example. Let's do the logs, the exponentials, right? If I say, uh, what's the, in the other direction this time? If we go with the logs and exponentials now, if our exponential function was the exponential, well, sorry, was the original function, okay? So I'm going to say log base e of e to the x. Yeah, this is, well, if I take that out, that's just x times 1. 
it works, right? Hmm. We did this guy. Will it work? Can you try it? I'll give you a 30 second start on it. Why don't you have a think about why exactly it does that? Why it comes out. Apart from the fact that that's the definition, that's what it should do, okay. why is it doing it? How do you write inverse for y? Because, like, fx has. You don't really. That's why you have to give a label to it and say there's an original and there's an inverse. This is why we introduced the whole f inverse notation, precisely so we can do this. So if you like, let's call this, because we did start with it, let's call what we started with, the original y, let's call that f. Okay, which means, huh, it doesn't matter really, because f inverse is, we determined it was the same function, didn't we? Okay, so whichever way you do it, and I'm interested, maybe, I mean, you've already started, but you could do it either way, that's what we were trying to say before, right? In this case, it's symmetrical, right? So it doesn't matter which way you did it. So if I did say this, this is what it would look like. That should be your first line, right? Do you see that's just the substitution? How, how many lines did it take you to get there? Uh, two. Two? Three. three. Did you multiply through? Is that what you did? Yeah. I just like made it x minus one rather than writing one x minus one x minus one. Sorry, what did you make x minus one? Instead of writing one, I just wrote x minus one over x minus one. Oh, I see what yeah. you did. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus one. That eliminates the numerator, sorry, the denominator there. And it introduces an x minus one there. Uh, why am I putting brackets? Because the next time I do it, those um, negative signs are going to send me first in, right? Okay, what am I getting here two on x. the... 2x. Yeah, two two x. X. Of course, 1 minus negative 1. Uh, 2. 2. Done. Happy? 